All right, friends, uh, welcome. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about some recent uh, developments that has happened in modern IL power calculation formula and that has actually happened in the last three, four years. And uh, But before we go into that uh, discussion, uh, let's take a uh, walk into the history of the IL power calculation formulas so that we can appreciate uh, some of the changes and some of the improvements that has happened in the recent times with respect to IL power calculation formulas. So uh, the 40s of the last century was uh, quite an eventful year uh, because uh, uh, there was a World War, uh, the World War II uh, were, happened and that ended in 1945. And it was in the backdrop of this world war uh, that Harold Britley implanted his first IOL uh, in, the, uh, in, in Britain, in Great Britain, in, in 1949. And the second IOL was implanted in the 1950s. Right. Uh, but when was the first uh, biometric machines came into the picture and they were invented? And the first biometric machines were invented in, uh, in around early 70s, right? And uh, so what this proves is that that the history of the uh, IOL uh, power calculation predates biometry machine, right? Uh, the history of IOL power calculation predates biometry machine. So even when there was no biometry machine, IOLs were added. And one of the power, one of the formulas that were used was the basic refractive error uh, where uh, the patients uh, were implanted, uh, and it was thought that an 18 adapter IOL power would uh, would uh, behave like a human crystalline lens. And if the patient had a minus one glass, then a minus 1.25 would have been subtracted from that 18 adapter. And if the patient has had a plus one adapter glass, then a plus 1.25, 1.25 would have been added to that 18 adapter uh, uh, IOL. And that was how uh, IOL power was calculated even before the biometry machines came into the picture. Well, uh, when the biometry machines came into the picture uh, in the mid 70s, uh, a whole host of uh, two lens formulas uh, came into the picture. And uh, this was the time, remember, when PECO emulsification was not uh, invented or it was just in the verge of coming. And most of the time, these were actually ECC and uh, anterior chamber lens implantation. So the two lens formulas were all based on an analysis of the cornea, a measurement of the cornea, and a measurement of the axial length. The concept of any constants, that is the A constant, what we know of today, uh, or the surgeon factor was not there. Well, in a way uh, that worked because uh, when uh, they implanted uh, the IOL in the uh, anterior chamber. The IOL position was relatively fixed uh, and uh, because there was no anterior capsular contraction and, um, and uh, that worked well. But uh, as we understand that anterior chamber IOLs faded with the advent of pacomulsification and uh, the implantation of the IOL in the capsular bag became a non so what happened during this time is that um, surgeons recognized that uh, IOL implantation is in the bag is uh, the result is not often predictable because of the bag contraction. And uh, you need to understand uh, the anterior chamber depth postoperative, the concept of effective lens position was still not there. The concept was there, but the term, in, term was uh, still did not come up. And uh, the anterior chamber depth or the lens position postoperatively was important to understand, and therefore came the concept of a constant optimizer, a constant, with uh, the formula which uh, Sanders, Ridzlaff, and Kraft first introduced, SRK formula, which we know as, which is power is equal to a constant minus 2.5 L minus 0.9 K, which again was actually a theoretical formula. But nevertheless, it brought in the concept of A constant, uh, which uh, was till that time not uh, heard of. So the Sanders, Red Slap and Kraft, that is the SRK formula for the first time, brought in the concept of A constant. 
and the A constant was directly derived from the manufacturer's lens manufacturer's box. However, uh, though SRK formula was a huge improvement in terms of the theoretical formulas that uh, were there before, like the Fyodorov, the Kolabander, yet the SRK formula fell short of expectations because uh, the because things were theoretical and uh, the A constant was theoretical because the manufacturer provided that um, based on the physics or the geometry of the lens and the corneal power and the axial lens were calculated uh, and it was still a two lens formula uh, which was extremely theoretical and fell short of some ex of expectations. So what was the improvement uh, in terms of the SRK2 formula over the SRK formula? The SRK2 formula recognized that, uh, that uh, it was not just enough to take the A constant from the manufacturer's box and put it in a formula. Things were very theoretical. So what they did basically was they understood and they, then they assumed, I would rather say, that uh, bigger axial lens will have a bigger anterior chamber depth. That is, the lens after the cataract surgery would sit further away from the cornea, right? And shorter axial lens, the lens is going to sit uh, closer to the cornea after the cataract surgery. And based on that assumption, they started adding further to the A constant that they derive from the uh, from the manufacturer's box. As you can see in this picture over here, the A constant now was not constant. It was uh, varying now with the axial length of the patient, right? So for example, if the axial length was 23.5, which is a normal axial length of a patient, they would not add anything to the A constant of the manufacturers. However, the, if the axial length was uh, higher than that or lower than that, they would be adding or subtracting values on that A constant. However, though the SRK2 formula was a vast improvement and uh, predicted fairly accurately the aisle position in the bag in those days for the average eyes, yet there were unexpected errors uh, in longer and as well as in shorter eyes, right? And the reason was that until 1996, uh, when the holiday formula first came, the holiday one, it was assumed that a longer eye would have a longer ACD, right? A longer eye would have a longer ACD. And a shorter eye would have a shorter ACD. The walks of holiday in 1996 showed that this was actually a flawed concept and this may not happen all the time. Hence, the uh, concept of the SRK2 formula now came in, and the SRK2 formula was a further improvement of the SRK2, and the SRK2 is now an obsolete after the SRK2 formula came in. So, the SRK2 formula, what value does it uh, bring in? Uh, well, for the first time now, SRK2 formula understands that it's not just important to tie the A constant that the manufacturer is providing with the axial length. You need to tie it with the uh, central corneal power also. And the SRKT uh, therefore made the formula more refined. And um, to some extent, it is a regression analysis formula. That is, it studied its, uh, the very many results with the SRKT formula. And accordingly, it went into a regression analysis. Of